Welcome to Take the Lead Radio with Dr. Diane Hamilton, where she interviews some of the most successful leaders, entrepreneurs, authors, speakers, and other individuals who will inspire you to take the lead in your career and personal life. And now, here is Dr. Diane Hamilton. I am here with Michelle Tillis Letterman. She's an accomplished speaker, trainer, coach, author of four books, including the internationally recognized The 11 Laws of Likeability and her most recent, The Connector's Advantage. She's been everywhere, Forbes, you name it. And I'm so excited to have you here, Michelle. Welcome. Glad to be here. Well, this isn't the first time I've interviewed you. This is exciting. And we've met in person and we're in a few groups together, and I know you are the ultimate connector. So, <laughs> I mean, wow. And I, I don't, you know, I'm trying to think if, who met first, I mean, I think I actually reached out to you first as a, for a speaker for Forbes, yes. and I, because you were just everywhere. I'm thinking, who is this woman? She's just like <laughs> everywhere, and she does everything in an amazing way, and you're a super connector, or you're a super international connector. I gotta look at the term for uh, <laughs> what it is for international, but you have terms for these different types of connectors we're gonna get into. But I wanna know, you know, I mean, it seems kind of an easy thing to ask, but I really kinda of wanna know why be a connector? And, cause you have seven mindsets that you talk about and can we just go into that a little bit? Absolutely, and and I love, you know, it seems like a basic connection, a question of why be a connector? Right. Um, and because there actually is an advantage in personal and professional in all aspects of your life, whatever you're working on, you're gonna get those results faster, easier, better. Don't worry about the bad grammar. Faster, <laughs> easier, better. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And what I really want to put out there is one, the whole first chapter is about the proof of concept. You know, why being a connector, why relationship based thinking and acting makes those differences in all aspects of what you're working on. Um, but I want everyone to recognize that anyone can infuse these actions, these mindsets into the way in which they conduct themselves and get these same rewards. You know, I meet a lot of people who ask me how I did what I've done. And I imagine if I get that, I can't imagine how often you get that. And so <laughs> is there a, like, is there timing to this? I mean, are, are some of the people who are really good at this lucky because they got in early? Is it too late? Like if you were, I see these people have millions on Twitter. I'm thinking, how do you get to that point from this point? So, I mean, how hard is it if you started late? That's a really interesting question. I think the timing question is so interesting. Nobody's asked me that before. And no, it's, it's never too late. Mm -hmm. I think when, wherever you are, there's always some place that you can go. And wherever you are now is more than where you've been before. So mm -hmm. we're always kind of on that trajectory. We're on that journey. And so where, wherever you are is phenomenal. And what I would say is um, it's, ne it's never too late, of course. Uh, but don't, like one of the mindsets, and I know we're going to go into this, but one of the mindsets is, a, is coming from a place of abundance. And the idea that there, there is enough. And to appreciate and not judge yourself in relation to other people. Yeah. And so what, right? So what we do is, well, I only have 10,000 followers. Well, when you say that, it is a comparison. Yeah, it's, it's so hard to not do that. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of people, well, that's a mistake they make. And, and I think that you can only compare yourself to what you're capable of doing in some ways, but there are mistakes that people do make. And if that's not one of them, what are some of the mistakes that they make? Well, not recognizing the value of relationships yeah. and not investing time in building those relationships. So if you think about most of the things that we want, that we're working on, um, a new job, a promotion, um, making the sale, getting the client, starting a business, writing a book, being happier, being healthier. Like this is like the general list that people put out there. Right. There are statistics that will show you why relationships will get you those results faster, easier, better. <laughs> Every single one of them, even health and happiness, which seems a little strange. <laughs> but um, when it comes to happiness, those strong work relationships predict your happiness on the job, boost your productivity by 50%. Wow. wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a time when people feel really disconnected too, you know, and, and it's very hard. A lot of us are working virtually and I have so many people who 
ask me, I mean, how do you do this networking thing? Where do you start? How do you become this super connector? You talk about global super connectors and super connectors. You have all these different levels of connectors. Do you want to talk about those levels? Because I think they're kind of interesting and what they mean and what's the best one to be. Sure. And, and I don't think everyone needs to strive to be a global super connector. And I think that's really important to put out there. Uh, the, the first four levels, is, it starts with a non-connector. And I will tell you that probably nobody out there is a non-connector. It is very, very rare to be a non-connector. You have to really you know, um, like think people are awful and I'm scared of you and I don't have anything to do with you and, um, and have no interest in, in relationships. And, you know, when it comes to, we were talking about happiness. I also do want to address health. Social isolation has been shown to have as large an impact on mortality as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Wow. I, I saw that in your notes and I thought that's just unbelievable. But I think so many right. people are socially isolated now. And, and I think though, but you know, a lot of them um, who are listening to this maybe think, well, I'm in a, um, you know, I'm in these online uh, meetings with people. I'm in, you know, for work and, and things like that. But it doesn't really fill up much of their day. I mean, a lot of us are in these virtual teams where you're not really saying a whole lot. And it's, it's hard. And I think sometimes when you're in these virtual settings, if you're an introvert specifically, uh, they, they, that can be really challenging because people will talk all over you and you never get a chance to talk and then you sometimes feel more isolated. Is, is it hard for an introvert to be a net, super networking type of person or can they do it as well as anyone else? Some of the best connectors I know are introverts. Um, they actually have an edge to it because they are natural born listeners. Right, right. And they're better in the one-on-one -on -one, and that's where real connection forms. So I think when we talk about you know, some of the mindsets, they, they do have an advantage. Um, and we're going, kind of going all over the place. So I want to come back to the, the levels because I wanted to make that point in saying, even though we're working virtually, even though um, we are all kind of doing our own thing, there's very few people that really land in that non-connector level. At a minimum, most of us are emerging connectors. There's two spectrums that you kind of think about when you're moving up. One is the responsiveness or the initiation of um, that connection. Right. So are you responding to others requests for help or others reaching out or are you initiating reach out and initiating ways to add value? So that's kind of where we start the moving up. And as we get further up, it becomes about the breadth and depth of your connections. So that's kind of how we evolve. So when we're emerging, we're really in a more, um, you know, testing the waters, trying things out, not consistently doing it. Um, but we see the value. Right. And so we we're we're maybe not comfortable yet, but we're, we're testing some things out. As we become a little bit more uh, used to it, we become a responsive connector. So this is where you are responding to the reach out, you're responding to the requests, but you're not necessarily initiating them so much. Okay. And then as we move a little bit further, we become an acting connector. And an acting connector might be as far as you need to go. An and acting why is that? Why wouldn't you want to go any further than that? Well, you can. I'm not going to say not to. Um, yeah. But I don't want people to feel like, well, I'm never going to be this, right? Uh -huh. you said uh -huh. before, like, well, I'm starting so late. I'll never get there. So why bother trying at all? Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. right, right. So so don't be like, for me, um, and for anybody, it might not be the goal to be a global super connector. Okay. Being an acting connector means that you are actively valuing and being relationship based in your interactions. You are both initiating and responding. Um, you have these mindsets incorporated, but you just might not have yet developed the breadth and depth of your connections. Right, right. Okay. And this is a great place to be. Mm -hmm. Right. So once you start, once you're here and you're acting, then you can start to start to think about, well, maybe do I want a niche? Right. So a niche connector is somebody who um, you would say, oh, she knows everyone in town, right? A certain <laughs> geographic region. Or, oh, they know everybody in law, a certain industry. Or... Um, it could be a certain job function or it could be a certain, um, whatever that niche might be. My sister knows everybody in real estate law in New Jersey, yet she's not a lawyer. Mm. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, we all know those people, people, right, that have they, that. They all know her because uh -huh. she, is, she has a niche um, connector in that industry. So, um, so that's great. And that's all she needs. For most of her career, she's an entrepreneur um, and her business has been focused in only the state of New Jersey. And she didn't need to go beyond the state of New Jersey. Now she's kind of becoming a little bit more um, of a super connector in that field. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's all she needed. 
And that was great. And sometimes niche is great. Now, the, the truth is, the more you move up that spectrum, the more advantage you get because you are more able to access different types of people with different ways to add value to your network. So it's not like I can only help people within this industry and I'm great here, uh -huh. but, but what if somebody's asking you for somebody outside of that industry or something that's not related, you might not have access to that network. And that's where you become a super connector where you know people everywhere, all over the country, um, all different industries, all different geographies, all different nationalities, all different education levels. You name the difference, you know the person. And that's a super connector. And when we go global, we cross our own country's borders. And that's, those are the, the levels. Okay, so we're connected to all these people, but what good does that do us necessarily? Do we, if we don't ask for anything, if we're giving all this content, we're trying to give them things so that later, you know, if they need anything, maybe sometimes, you know, we give them stuff and hopefully someday they'll do something for us maybe. But is that a good mindset to have in mind that you're doing this in hope of having something back later? I mean, what, what's our, our thought process in that? I love that you went there because it's not an in hope of. Yeah. Right? It's a way of thinking and being and interacting, right? This is who we are. My, my brother-in-law, when he came into my office, I was working on the book and he, he's like, well, what's the difference between networking and, and, you know, this connector. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, I'm like, well, networking is something that we do, but a connector is someone that you are. So say that like, I think that's so important. Say it one more time. Networking is something that you do. A connector is someone that you are. Mm -hmm. And then I got really excited. I said, oh my God, you just gave me the last line of my book. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that is a good line. It really is. And I, I think that we think that we have to be doing all these things without even having a real thought as to where it leads. You know what I mean? There's just no, you're just kind of chasing your tail sometimes. Does that happen with people? That's why I wanted, um, that's why I really loved your question because one of the mindsets is to have a clear vision. And I've gotten pushback on this a little bit because people were like, well, a connector is very outwardly focused. I said, no, a connector is relationship focused. Yeah, I agree with that completely. Right? Yeah. And it's not all about you. It's not all about me. It's about our relationship. It's about our exchange. And it's about valuing those relationships. Um, and it's not about quid pro quo. So one of the mindsets is to have a clear vision of what you're working on. So I always say, know what you want and know how to ask for it. And a connector, yeah. a connector who has a clear vision of what they're working on and is willing to ask is going to get their results faster, easier, better. If you don't have a sense of what you're working on or what you want or what you need, when you are with other connectors or people in general, they're saying, well, they're trying to figure out how to help you too. You right, need to right. give an opportunity. Relationship-based is giving other people the same opportunity to feel valuable and to contribute to the relationship as you do. Well, so where do you start though? If you've never done this, you have LinkedIn, you been, haven't been on it in two years, you, you, <laughs> you think, wow, I've got seven connections. And you know, how do you start if you're somebody like that? Can I tell you, I'm going to go back to my sister. She was not on LinkedIn until like a few months ago. Uh -huh. like, she's been in business 25 years. Yeah. And she wasn't on LinkedIn. She didn't need it. Mm -hmm. But now she's seeing the business and the industry change. And she's like, I, I think I need a LinkedIn profile. Will you help me? <laughs> well, she does have a good go-to resource. <laughs> started her LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. And then she goes, well, I have no connections. I said, well, first of all, connect to me. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, think about the people you went to high school with. Mm -hmm. And then think about the people you went to camp with. And then think about your neighbors and think about your friends and think about those people who already know you. The majority of them are on LinkedIn. Right. So you start with the people who are of course going to say yes. And now you're not somebody with 17 connections. And I'm like, oh, is this a real, is this a spammer? Right. 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 <laughs> Circle of influence. It's the people you know, right? It's just, that's all it is. Yeah. It, it, the thing is, is not feeling that, that, um, that inertia. It's just getting some momentum and starting. And, and what I said to her is, I just want you to spend 10 to 15 minutes every day looking through the people you may know or thinking of people you know and looking for them on LinkedIn and sending a personalized note. And I, I don't know what her latest is, but she was probably up to 154 connections within a month. Wow. With, Less than 1% of people on LinkedIn have more than 500 connections. Less than what? 1%? 1%. 1%. 1%. 1%. 
Yeah, less than 1%. And I know you think that's, I thought it was really shocking when I saw that statistic because I saw it today. And I thought, yeah. really? Because everybody I know has more than 500. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It, well, it took, it, you know, that, that's an interesting thing because I, I have talked to people about what you do over 20,000 and stuff, but I never really thought about the how low the average was or the normal setting. So I, I think that gives people a lot of hope uh, that, that, that there's, uh, it's never too late to start networking. And you are the networking queen. You and I are in several things together with author groups and different things, and you are so good at it. I can't think of anyone better to write a book about connecting than you. So thank you for being on the show, Michelle. I just want to know how can, is there last thoughts that you'd like to share with people and how can people reach you? Um, well, you know, it's funny because when you said thank you for, for those kind of words, because when you reached out to me and she reached out to me randomly, like, hey, I heard you and would you like to do this? And you haven't been able to get rid of me since, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, now that you mentioned, no, it's been great ever since. We've been to so many great things. I'm like, once you connect, you think about the next point of connection. And, and so this would be my, my takeaway and I will share how to connect with me. But, uh -huh. um, but when you feel that connection and we hit it off and, and I was like, wow, this woman's awesome. And, and, and we just started to keep that connection going. And, and I introduced you to somebody and you introduced me to somebody and I ended up doing a talk for Forbes and you ended up being part of the authoresses group and, and uh -huh. it continued. And because of the consistency and because of the additional points of contact, that relationship grew. And we've only ever met in person once. That's right. right. And it was quite the event with Steve Forbes. And I actually wrote about you in my book. <laughs> <laughs> it's right up there on the shelf. It's up there. It's behind me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I gotta remember what page you're on, but she's in there. It's worth picking up the book just for that. But pick up the connector's advantage. And how would they do that? So they can go to theconnectorsadvantage.com and that's where there's lots of um, bonuses. If you buy the book, you just upload your receipt and depending on how many you bought, it's all the bonuses that you get. Uh, and you know, if you actually, I get, I get loads of stuff away. So if you go to my website, which is Michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E, Tillis, T-I-L-L-I-S, Letterman, L-E-D-E-R-M-A-N.com. Um, if you go to the gift pack, you'll see all the things you get. But if you just sign up for the newsletter, you get all the gifts anyway. There's video series and networking assessments and uh, checklists for injury. There's loads and tons of resources out there. Um, and then just on my website, you can get to my YouTube channel and my blog and um, and then connect to me on LinkedIn. That's my platform. That's where I love to be. Let me know where you heard of me and uh, we will connect. Well, that's awesome. And I have some of your stuff right here. I mean, you have amazing... <laughs> amazing stuff and I am really impressed with all the quality of everything I hope everybody goes out and picks up your book the connectors advantage with Michelle Tillis Letterman thank you thanks Diane